Most succulents will flower at some stage in their lives. The purpose of producing flowers is reproduction. When a flower is pollinated, a seed pod forms and when ripe, it will disperse the seed. But for some succulents, producing a flower marks the end of their life. After the seeds are released, they die. They are called monocarpic succulents and their last flower is called the death bloom. Thankfully, it is only a minority of succulents that die after flowering. Most succulents are long-lived and produce flowers once or more every year. Even succulents that do die with the flower tend to live on in a way. It is common for them to grow offsets that will continue to grow. These offsets will also eventually flower, but before that comes about, they will produce offsets of their own. But which succulents die after flowering and what does a death bloom look like? Can we do anything to stop them from dying? Now let's have a look at some popular monocarpic succulents. We've got Aeonium, Agave, Orostachis and Sinocrassula, Sempervivum, Sedum, Crassula, although there is only a few species of these two that are monocarpic, and then random mutations. Now let's have a close look at Aeonium. Aeonium tend to flower every year in autumn or winter, but it is not a given. Some Aeonium take time to produce flowers and it can take years before they finally bloom. By the time flowering comes along, Aeonium are usually well developed with multiple branches so a few flowering rosettes dying will not make much of a difference. Agave are quite different to Aeonium and take many years, even decades, to produce their death blooms. Agave flowers are quite spectacular and can reach a couple of meters in height. Agave will produce many offsets in their lifetime and create large clumps and dense colonies. Orostachis and Sinocrassula are very similar and tend to flower yearly. Sinocrassula will flower in the warm months and Orostachis in autumn. Both produce quite a few offsets and the death bloom will only kill the oldest rosettes. Sempervivum flowering may depend on your climate. I grow many Sempervivum species, but have only seen them flower a handful of times. In colder climates, they may flower yearly. Though, just like with the other monocarpic succulents, Sempervivum grow lots of pups and so the death bloom will not affect them much. Sedum and Crusula both have species that will die after flowering, though it is only a handful. They tend to produce enough offsets or branches that will continue living after some of the older parts of the plant pop out the death bloom. Now let me explain what I mean by mutants. Some succulents that don't usually produce death blooms and are not monocarpic can grow a death bloom just like the Echeveria black prints in the photo. This likely happens due to random mutations within the plant. This particular black prints was one of a thousand I had growing in the nursery at the time and it was the only one to produce the death bloom. Now let's have a look at what does a death bloom actually look like. Death blooms usually start forming at the center of a rosette or a branch and grow tall from there. It's like the plant is rising from the middle. In the case of this Aeonium arborum, only one of the rosettes is flowering, while the rest just continue to happily live on. But it is not unusual for more than one rosette to grow a death bloom. In this photo, we can see the start of a death bloom on Orostachis ivarangae. The stalk will eventually triple in height before the flowers open up. As you can see, only a few of the biggest rosettes are growing the flower, while the rest are just continuing with their lives. Now, this is also Orostachis ivarenge death bloom, now covered in lots of tiny flowers. When the flowers start to fade, so will the rosette at the bottom. The offsets next to the dying rosette will, however, survive and will produce their own death bloom next year. Now, many of you may be wondering whether it is possible to stop a death bloom. Well, when the time for a death bloom comes, there is nothing that will stop it from killing the rosette it's growing out of. The bloom can be cut, but the result will still be the same. The rosette will die. The only difference is that cutting the death bloom is likely to result in more offsets being produced. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. I've cut the death bloom of this Sinocrasula and while the rosette is long gone, there are now new offsets shooting out from the death bloom stalk. You can see all those little green shoots. So should death blooms be cut off then? Well, in my opinion, yes, death blooms should be cut off for a number of reasons. Firstly, flowering always takes away energy from a plant, so unless you want to enjoy the flower, 
cutting it off will di direct energy to growing. Secondly, if for some reason a monocarpic plant has not had time to grow offsets, but is growing a death bloom, it will completely die. Cutting the death bloom off is likely to force the plant to produce offsets before it dies. And thirdly, aphids. These little pests love succulent flowers and can wreak havoc on your succulents. In conclusion, death blooms and monocarpic succulents may sound scary, but in the end it is not all that bad. The plants are likely to be developed enough so only a small part dies off. And that's it for today. If you'd like to read more about monocarpic succulents and death blooms, you can visit our website succulentgrowingtips.com.